BC and virtual conjugants, welcome to another Word on Wednesday, what we call Wow Wednesday. I'm excited about what God has in store for us. You know, we have we've started a new year, and uh, there are some exciting things I believe I'm declaring that God has for you. Wonderful things. Now, in spite of all of the things that we've been faced with and the fact that the devil has tried to stop us with COVID-19, but he couldn't. He has tried his best to kill the church, to shut us down, but we're still going strong. In fact, we're stronger than ever. And if you're wondering if you are in spiritual warfare, well, let me affirm that you are. Yes, you are. But the battle is the Lord's. Praise God, we are winning. We are winning. What I want to talk to you about this evening is four steps to winning the battle of the mind. I want to share some insights that I believe will help you, that will help you tremendously. In, in, in fact, I just want to say right now, I want to ask you a question. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? What are you thinking about today? Um, I believe uh, these are life-defining questions. And I also want to state that the thoughts you think will directly impact your, your life. And I also want you to know that changing your thinking from a negative to a positive, based on God's word, of course, hmm, is one of the most important decisions that you could ever make. I believe it's your journey to healing and wholeness. And like most things in lives, in our lives rather, we have the opportunity and the privilege to choose, to choose what thoughts we dwell on. Amen. To choose what thoughts we dwell on. And what we choose each and every day We'll set our lives in, in one or two directions. If you're thinking negative, caught up in bitterness, worried thoughts, you're going to live, of course, a negative and not a positive life, a bitter life, if that's, what you, if that's where you are and what you've been, been thinking. I, I guarantee you that that's not the way you uh, have to live. But when you choose to focus on positive, faith-filled, joyful thoughts based on God's Word, you begin to live a more, more uh, a positive, faith-filled, joyful life. In fact, the very life that Jesus came to offer you, to give you. In fact, the word says it this way in Proverbs, the 23rd chapter, verse 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Now here's how the principle works. When you go through, through the day, thinking about God's goodness and his, his greatness, his his, his awesomeness, his, his faithfulness, his, his goodness that's all around you. It's going to give you a positive outlook on life. It's going to encourage you and you're going to be an encouragement to others. But you have to choose to think about 
ways that God has provided for you. And you have to begin to, to assess his benefits because they are many. Now, as I stated earlier, what I want to talk, talk to you about is, is the battle that's going on in your mind right now. What are you thinking? We need to understand that our lives are, are the product of how we think. And the fight is whether we will give God or Satan access to our thought lives. And by no means does the enemy want you to, to, to be in the Word, to study the Word, to, to put God first. In fact, he would love it if you put him on the back burner and leave him there. And leave the Word of God there. Um, but when you begin to study the Bible and, and learn what God's will is for, for, for you and for our lives, it, it brings about a change. And I want you to know that Satan will do anything, the devil will do anything he possibly can to distract you and, and to keep you from picking up that, 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 that book, the Bible that contains God's word that is so precious to us. The devil will tell you, you don't need to. You don't need to read the Bible. You, 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 you don't need to get information on how to live successfully, successful lives. Uh, or you, can, uh, you can get it from the world. Uh, then you'll be just like everybody else, huh? Hmm. Now, just like the automotive industry, they have manuals to their, their, to their automobiles, automobiles that they engineer and make. to get us here and there. <coughs> the Bible is our instruction or manual. It'll tell us how to get from here to there and how to do it successfully without mishaps or <coughs> Or misfortune. Every every automobile comes with a manual on how to operate the vehicle. Well, the Bible is our, our instruction manual. It gives us the right information. the right information as to how to live our lives to with maximum performance. <laughs> oh my God. God is our creator. He's the only one who can give us exactly the right information the right way at the right time to ensure our success. Our thoughts hmm, are powerful. So powerful, in fact, that if we don't exert our authority over them, they will certainly work against us. And there's nothing in life that can exist without it first existing in our minds. Do you know you were a thought in God's mind before you uh, ever manifested. You were a thought in God's mind. And if, if, if we won't change in our lives,
change. We begin by changing the way we think. Let's look at Proverbs the 23rd chapter verse 7, which says that as we think in our hearts, so are we. Now, as you know, man is a spirit being, living in a physical body, possessing a soul. And the soul is where, where the mind lives. And the mind is where all the thinking, feeling, and, 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 and choice or choosing take place. Our minds are the arena of faith and the battleground for our lives. And what our lives will be like will be determined by the outcome of the battle raging in our minds. Now, the enemy, <laughs> he's out to destroy us. He wants to use our thoughts against us, our ideas and suggestions to accomplish his task. But I want you to know something this evening, that our gracious, loving Heavenly Father has not left us unequipped or ill-prepared to protect ourselves. We have been given armor, and it's the armor of God. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty and strong to the pulling down of strongholds and evil thoughts and wicked imaginations that would exalt itself against the knowledge and presence of our Lord. Our armor is not made out of uh, metal, but it's rather knowledge. It's what we know about the truth. They say, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Set you free. Ye shall know the truth. Righteousness, the gospel of peace, faith, salvation, and God's word. Reference is found in the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, chapter, verses 10 through 17. Now, where do we begin? How do we defend ourselves against the thoughts of the enemy? The things that he hurled at us, things that he targeted us with. The first thing, because I said I want to share with you four steps to winning the battle of the mind. And the first step is you identify it. Identification. Identification of each, each thought. Each thought that come our way. That's our first line of defense. You begin to investigate every thought. Every thought. And you determine if it's a friend or a foe. Is it exalting the word of God? Is it acknowledging the things of God? Investigation begins with questions. Does this thought agree with the word of God? The will of God? If not, then we have to view that particular thought as a foe, as an enemy, dangerous and really something to be avoided and cast down. Every thought, whether you know it or not, has a life of itself. Every thought has a life or death component attached to it. In fact, you have never had a thought to come your way or, or our way that did not have some type of life attached to it. I will explain. See, once a thought is allowed access into our lives, 
the nature or life within that thought begins its work. For example, a thought about an individual where we assess or a thought that causes you to assess individuals' capabilities or to your dislike or displeasure who you're going to snub, who you're going to, how you say, uh, uh, adhere to. A thought, shall I snub them? Give them a cold shoulder? Give them a little of my time? And not any of my time. In other words, attached to this thought is a relationship. A relationship destroying component when it goes that way or what we call go south. The moment this idea is embraced where it causes you to assess someone and you don't value them the way God values them. So therefore you don't have to how you say invest in them or give them an opportunity or give them a chance. Once it's acted on, our relationship with that individual begins to deteriorate. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you get it? I know you do. Now, the, the, the second thing that we have to take under consideration when we're dealing with winning the battle of the mind. Because all this is in the mind. It's how you think and what you think of others. Now, the other thing here is, the, 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 the next step is quenching, quenching a thought. And the word quench means to extinguish or to extinguish a thought. Like you take a fire extinguisher, that many of us have a little portable fire extinguisher in our homes or in our in our office buildings or in, uh, uh, in, in that you see in buildings where the public is involved, and and the fire extinguisher cuts off a fuel source. And the fuel source of thoughts is attention. Do you hear me now? Is attention. How much attention are you going to give to a thought? Could be by way of meditation, worry. When we remove the attention factor from that thought, we are thus quenching it extinguishing it, cutting off its source, its fuel source. And the more we entertain or meditate on thoughts, thoughts, thoughts that are contrary to the will and way of God or, or vice versa, according to the will of God. But the more we entertain thoughts, they grow in strength. Turning our attention away from a thought, quenching it, on the other hand, and on other things or thoughts that the enemy brings. He tell you, you're going to have a lousy day. He tells you that people are not going to like you. Nobody's for you. You can't win. You might as well throw in the towel. Life is not worth living. 
your life has no value. Once our attention has been redirected to the word, and that's what you have to do. You have to cast down, you have to begin to extinguish And not pay attention to thoughts like that. But you have to replace those thoughts with thoughts that by renewing your mind, by the washing of the word of God. Truthfully speaking, uh, uh, when, 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 when the fire department, when they go out to, 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 to deal with a fire scene, you have first alarm, second alarm, third, third alarm fourth alarm, and then so forth. Well, what their, their, their goal is to contain that fire, to keep it from spreading, to, to, to extinguish it, to, to, and to do it as safely as possible. So what I'm saying here is, there are thoughts that you can't afford to be running loose in your mind. They'll work havoc. They'll mess up your day. They'll ruin your life. You got to contain them and you got to extinguish them and you got to put them out. Do you hear me? God, there are some things God doesn't want you thinking that way because as a man thinketh, so is he. If you think that you can't, then you will not be able to. That's what my grandfather used to say all the time. He used to say, if you think you can, you can. And if you think you can't, you can't. And you know, there's some truth to that. Although you may have the ability, but if you don't think you can, you are already defeated. Do you hear me? Once our attention has been redirected, we have to redirect our attention to the word. Once you do that, the battle, the battle is half won. And then third, You have to take that thought captive because that thought is trying to take you captive. You have to cap capture it. Now, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse 5, gives us some very, very strong and wise advice. Paul admonishes us to bring into captivity every thought every thought now. Do you hear me? Every thought. Therefore, I'm telling you, you can't afford a loose thought. Because you don't know where to take you. Look carefully at the following phrase. Learn how thoughts take you captive. And you learn how to, see, you learn how thoughts take you captive and you have to also learn how to take thoughts captive. Do you, you follow me? It's not enough just to, 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 to observe or, 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 or how thoughts take you captive. You got to know how to capture your thoughts. For a thought to capture you or to cap, capture us, it must bring with it other thoughts accompanying thoughts to support its case and they work together they partnership they endeavor to overwhelm us with evidence things that remind us of, 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 of things that you encounter that remind us of previous encounters or things or negative events that took place in your life. Hmm. Working together, they remind us of events and statements made by others to provide evidence that the attacking thought is legitimate. You see, that's what, you know, uh, confirming. Not affirming, but confirming. But by understanding this, we now have the upper hand and can take advantage. We can turn our attention off of the thoughts and unto what the word says. 
which provides proof that the approaching thought is false. And you know, you've heard people say, nobody likes me. Listen, that individual does not know everybody. Or nobody cares. How many, oh, maybe in your circle, maybe you're experiencing some negativity, but you don't, you haven't encountered everyone. Maybe you need to change your circle uh, 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 of associates. If the thoughts that we are dealing with are speaking to us, then you're going to have to speak to it. You're going to have to tell it. I don't know everybody. Huh? You're going to have to capture it. Then we must speak to them in order to capture them. Speak to that attacking thought. You do exactly as Jesus illustrated in Luke's Gospel, the fourth chapter, verse four. It is written. It is written. You, you, you're written. If you're dealing with your finances, you'll always be poor. No, you begin to declare and decree over you, your destiny. No, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If you're feeling weak, you begin to declare, no, I'm strong. I'm strong. The joy of the Lord is my strength. If you're feeling feeble, no, I have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God resides within me. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, you begin to declare, greater is he that is in me than he that is in and of the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. The righteousness of the Lord is mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You begin to declare the things of God, renewing your mind by the washing of the word of God. Wash it out. <laughs> Wash it out. <laughs> Wash it out. Don't let it ring you out. Wash it out. Hallelujah. Speak to those attacking thoughts. Speak to those things that tell you failure is your portion and you said no. Victory is my portion. Not, de not defeat. Victory, victory. It is written. In other words, let your voice be heard. I preached a message many, many years ago, voice your choice. No, voice your choice. Let your voice be heard. Speak, speak life to your, to your situation. Don't speak death, speak life. Speak life. And then, finally, the fourth step to winning the battle of the mind is uh, a lot of things we gain, we lose because we don't know how to maintain it. So you got to maintain. Maintain. Got to hold your ground. Maintain it. Maintain. Maintaining our thought life is a key to addressing every issue we'll ever face. Maintaining it. Maintaining our thoughts. Not losing ground. Not losing ground. There's, there's not a thought that our enemy can, can throw at us or hurl at us that our God has not already equipped us with scriptures to detect and defeat. And I'm going to tell you, redirect it. So that's not for me. Do you hear what I'm saying? That is not for me. 
And sometimes the enemy will use people, people sometimes that are close to us to, to, uh, to try to support things that to bring evidence that one, eh, you're not, you're not, you're not going to win. You're not, you're not, you're, you're, you're losing. Uh, you're fighting a losing battle. No. You, you said, no, losing is not my portion. My portion is winning. Hello? And then don't say silly things like, I'm losing my mind. I'm going crazy. Hello? You don't say things like that. You don't want to go crazy. You don't want to lose your mind. You don't know who will find it. <laughs> oh, excuse me for that one. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. Don't, don't say things like that. No, no. That is not your portion. That is not your portion. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but love power and a sound mind and what he has given you he's able to keep hallelujah you ought to shout on that one he's able to keep and you ought to you ought to say god is keeping me oh god is keeping me wow my god now 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 uh our responsibility you know i said that uh our god is has, has, has equipped us with scriptures to detect and defeat what the enemy throws at us. Our responsibility is to find that appropriate promise, scripture, word of God, appropriate scriptures, and use them properly. Amen. Use them properly. Now, you, you wouldn't use a lug wrench to put spark plugs in your car. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. There is a proper wrench for, for, that you can ratchet and use for fixing things, and God has e equipped you. You're not ill-prepared. You need to say, I'm not ill-prepared. I'm prepared to do the will of God. And, and many of these things start with, with your voice, voicing your choice, your word, agreeing with his will, and, and, and a desire to do and follow in obedience how he leads you and guides you. Do you hear me? Our responsibility is our responsibility. Now, God has provided the scriptures, the word to sustain us. It's our responsibility to stand on that word. Amen. Many times we won't, we know God has provided, we won't, we won't, we want him to how you should prop us up and all this other. But he's given us the word to assure us that we can stand. And when we've done everything, continue to stand. Make that decision today. To take what you know and use it properly. You say, you shall know what? The truth? You shall know what? Ye shall know what? Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Set you free. Freedom is a whole lot better than bondage. Hallelujah. You endeavor. Now, now, uh, now I want to say a lot of time, uh, loose thoughts are accompanied by loose lips. And you have to bridle your tongue. You can't just let any and everything come out of your mouth. Or just, how you say, say everything you think. Bridle your thoughts with your word. That's how you bridle them. You, that's how you take 
captive or begin to take control. You, you, you don't just say everything. You say what God says. You agree with it. You don't even have to feel it. But feelings, feelings have very little to do with that. You don't have to feel it to agree with it. Agree with God. If for reason you find yourself slipping, here's a passage of scripture found in, in, in 1 John, the first chapter, verse 9. You ask the Father to forgive you. Then return to the task of, uh, of, of, of being diligent and vigilant in guarding what you allow your mind to dwell on. And you, and you surrender to God's grace and his power that's with you. And you put on God's armor against the wiles of the devil. Amen? Amen. I know you hear me. I, I know you hear me. Because see, with God's help, the scriptures tell us in Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse 13, with God's help now. And you need God's help. We all need God's help. I can do everything. You can do everything I need to do this year to be successful. And if you are lacking in insight and discernment, you ask for it. Like in James, the, the first, I mean, chapter one, verse five, you ask God to give you wisdom to make good, godly decisions. And then you ask for renewal. God to make all things new in your life. And you, and you go to God for help. Like in uh, the book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse 16. You come to him. You say, Lord, I'm coming to you for help. I need help. And I need grace for this situation. In fact, you need grace for every situation. But this particular situation that you're dealing with, you're not alone. But he said he'll not leave you and he certainly will not forsake you. And, and two, be reminded that God has not forgotten you. Amen. And God hears you and he answers your prayers. You declare that. God hears me and he answers my prayer. That's 1 Peter, 3rd chapter, verse 12, and James, the 5th chapter, verse 16. God hears and he answers prayer. He's a prayer hearing and answering God. And he's always working. And you declare over yourself, starting right now, Romans 8, 28, that all things are working together for good to them that love God who are what? Called according to his purpose. You start declaring, I am called according to his purpose. Because I love him. God is always working. He's always working to make us more like Jesus. Hello? And then declare over yourself that I have favor. I have favor. I live in God's favor. And I live in God's protection. That's Psalm number 5, verse, verse 12. You declare that. I live in God's favor. Amen? Amen. Now, and I'm just about to close, but I want to share this here. One of the enemy's tricks, one of Satan's tricks, or the devil's trick, trick, tricks rather, is to get you to blame God. Mm -mm. Oh my God, for, for the things that have happened in your life. And let me share with you and assure you, God may use difficult, trying, even bad things to work them for good. But he never causes them. 
He's not the cause of them. There is a devil that's loose. He's loose in this world who's behind all destruction. If our thinking is wrong, we'll never recognize this thief. Do you hear me? I said, if our thinking is wrong, we'll never recognize this thief. He's a thief. He's a thief. And according to the word of God, in John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. Don't, 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 don't get God confused with a thief. He's not a thief. I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. See, if your thinking is wrong, We'll never recognize that the thief is behind what's happening, what's taking place around us. And just like any physical warfare we fight or engage in, the spiritual warfare we're engaged in has two opposing forces. God and his angels versus Satan and his demons. And the Bible tells us clearly, for we wrestle not, and this is in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Stop hitting that man and missing the enemy. Man is not your enemy. But he, he'll, he'll suggest and use others by way of thoughts and deception to try to, try to disrupt your life and your, lively, uh, your, your livelihood. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's why we ought to pray for, for everyone. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We already know that Satan and his group has been defeated. We already know that. The word tells us. But that doesn't stop him from continually whispering and making suggestions in our ears and in the ears of others that contradict the word of God. The devil is hoping that he can deceive us and he can find a little kink, a little kink in our armor where he can shoot his, his fiery darts and to bring us to a place of despair and bring us down. He's always trying to bring us down. Always trying to bring us down, to discourage us. And he can do so if he find a part of God's word that we are ignorant of or ignoring which is why it's so important, so important that we have a good foundation, a solid understanding of the word and how it applies to us in the heat of battle. The battle is the Lord and we have already won. We have the victory in Christ Jesus. Listen, you can't fight this fight by yourself. We can't fight this fight by ourselves. We need God's help. But guess what? You have his help. Hello? To, so in order to resist satanic influences that's trying to invade our thinking, we must put on the armor of God's word. 
How do we do that? Studying the scriptures daily. Meditating on them constantly. Is the spiritual equivalent of a soldier wearing a suit of armor. And then you can say, in, as in Ephesians the 6th chapter, verses 10 through 11, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Now notice now, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor uh, of, of, of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, in conclusion, it is God who makes us strong. Did, did, you, did you hear what I just read? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. In the Lord now. Don't be deceived. It's in the Lord. Hello? It is God who makes us strong. Therefore, we win the fight with the right mindset. Hello? I can't begin to tell you how much we love you and praying for your success. You're in our thoughts. We are mindful of what you're encountering, what you're dealing with. And we are believing God to bless you, that the blessings of God will be on you, you and yours throughout this year, on your family. And I want to encourage you to remember that Jesus is Lord. And in all your getting, get understanding. Amen. Amen. And be, be at peace. God is with you. God is with you. And he will not leave you. When fear comes, because the enemy will try to distract you with fear. Because the Christian walk is in his peace. But fear disrupts and it cancels the peace in our lives. So we have to make a decision to keep our minds focused on what God says at all times. Don't tolerate fear because tolerating fear will contaminate your faith. Hello? Job understood this when he said in Job, the third chapter, verse 25, and I'm wrapping up now. The things which I greatly feared has come upon me. Because a fear-filled mind will believe the ideas and the lies of the enemy. So when people try to put fear in your thoughts or the enemy use others to put fear in your thoughts through their action or, or words, you begin to declare the things of God, it is written. And you show Satan and the devil, that, the devil rather, that you mean business by refusing to be moved from your stand or your stance on God's word. It is written, that's your foundation. When fear comes up now, we must stand on God's word no matter what. He said it, I believe it, I declare it, decree it, therefore so be it. And be it unto me, Lord, according to thy word. And say it out loud. You don't have to understand how God is going to rescue, deliver, and, and, and increase you. Just know that he will. We have to watch our words now. The worst thing we can do in a situation is allow fear-filled emotions to overwhelm us, to speak negatively and agree with fear. 
what we feel on the inside. Proverbs the fourth chapter verse 20, 23 tells us to keep our heart with all diligence for out of it comes the issues of life. Now if we are going to guard our hearts we must guard also our eye gate, ear gate and our mouth gates. Hello? Because whatever gets in our heart now <laughs> oh my God, it will uh, come through our eyes and our mouth, whatever, hmm. you, you're going you're gonna to hear about it. I said, whatever gets in our hearts comes through our eye, our eyes, our ears, and our mouth. I was, I was dealing with senses now. What are you watching? What are you listening to? What are you saying? You can't listen to everything or everyone because it has the potential of entering your heart and creating issues in your life. Amen. I know you hear me. I know you hear me. What we meditate on and meditate, you even worry on, whatever we meditate on in abundance eventually will overtake and overwhelm our lives. Therefore, I'm going to share this scripture with you and then we're going to call it an evening. It's found in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse 5. Casting down imaginations. Who? You. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The Lord wouldn't tell you to do something that you couldn't. We can capture every fear-filled thought, deceiving thought, and make it obey the word of God. How do we capture these thoughts? With spoken words. When we have fear-filled thoughts, I'm talking to someone this evening. We must open our mouth and you must open it wide and be loud and speak the promises of God concerning that fear. And don't be quick to agree just to please someone when they speak feel feel thoughts over you. They're, no, that's not my that's not for me now. No, no, speak for yourself now. That's not for me. I'm not going that route. When we cast that imagination down, those thoughts will not be able to build and form issues in our lives. We know God cannot lie. He always performs his word. What does that mean? It means that if God said it, that is the conclusion of that matter. If he says our lives are redeemed from destruction, it then becomes our responsibility to believe and to receive the promise by faith. This is the first thing we must do to activate our deliverance from the enemy's hand. Now, Psalm 91 is something you can set your life on. Psalm 91, verse 1, New Living Translation. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest. You're looking for rest now in the shadow of the Almighty. We live in His shelter. He protects us from all His outside junk and stuff. Amen. In Him we have rest. In Him we have peace. 
in him we have ease. So you can go to sleep this evening and you declare of yourself, I'm gonna sleep like a baby this evening. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from every deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. That's verse two through four. And he will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your, your armor and your protection. The word of God is our armor and our protection. We don't have to fear. We're, 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 we have a dwelling place. May the blessings of God be on you and your family forever. I, I, I want to ask you, if you don't know him, what are you waiting on? If you have never invited him into your life, what are you waiting on? What are you waiting for? This is your day. This is your moment. This is your golden opportunity to receive him and experience a personal savior in your life today. The Bible says that if you'll just simply confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's the word of God, according to Romans 10, verse 9. So pray this prayer with me. I, 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 I'm impressed to invite you into the family of God. Pray this prayer and believe it in your heart. Pray it from your heart. Dear Jesus, I believe that you died for me. And you rose again on the third day. I confess I'm a sinner. I don't know you, but I need to. I'm asking you for your love and your forgiveness today. Come into my heart, please. Forgive my sins. I receive your eternal life. Confirm your love by giving me peace joy and supernatural uh, supernatural love for others and i say amen. amen i believe it i believe you heard me now i want to pray a prayer blessing over you i want to welcome you first of all to the family of god and and we appreciate you taking advantage of this 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 wonderful opportunity we want to hear from you The Lord bless you and certainly keep you and watch God and over you and the Lord make his face to shine upon and enlighten you. May the Lord be gracious, kind, merciful, extending favor to you. The Lord lift up his approving countenance upon you and give you peace with tranquility of heart and life forever and continuously. And now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Will you agree with me by saying amen? And I just pray and believe peace, love, and shalom. And remember, Jesus is Lord and let everything that had breath praise ye the Lord. Shalom.